The objective of this lesson is to use a variety of strategies to classify quadrilaterals and triangles on a coordinate plane. To help you follow along in this lesson, we recommend, and your teacher might require, that you complete the companion capture sheet, which shows all these slides and includes spaces to record notes and your thoughts. For this lesson, you will need to remember some important concepts. One, you will need to know what negative reciprocals are and how to use them to identify slopes that are perpendicular. Two, you will need to remember the different kinds of triangles and the properties of each. Lastly, you will need to recall the different kinds of quadrilaterals and the properties of each. To help you, we have provided two resources. The first is called Properties of Triangles. I suggest you keep it handy during the next few slides. It describes each type of triangle and how to identify them. Suppose you are given the coordinates of three vertices of a triangle. Given that, how can we determine what type of triangle it is? At first, that might seem impossible, but think about what information you would need in order to identify the triangle. Also, think about what information you could calculate from these coordinates. Pause the video here and record your thoughts in the red box on your capture sheet. What would you need to know or figure out in order to be able to identify this triangle? Well, we can certainly plot the points and look at the triangle. And looking at it, we can make some guesses as to what kind of triangle it is. It's hard to say, but perhaps BC and BA are perpendicular. So maybe it's a right triangle. How could we prove that those two segments are perpendicular? BC and BA possibly are the same length. So it could be an isosceles triangle. How do we find the length of a side? Using what we know about coordinate geometry, we can find the slope and the length of each side of the triangle. If we apply the formula for slope, we see that the slope of AB is negative 3 fifths. Applying the same formula again, we see the slope of BC is 11 sixths. And the slope of AC is negative 17 fourths. We can also use the Pythagorean theorem or distance formula to find the lengths of each side. Here, we see the calculations for all three sides. Notice that we can use some of the calculations we already used to find slope in our distance calculations. For example, the slope of AC was negative 17 fourths. And to find the length of AC, we find the sum of the squares of negative 17 and of 4. So now we have the slopes of each side and the lengths of each side. Do you think you know what type of triangle it is now? Before we answer that for sure, let's take a look at our resource document, Properties of Triangles. Here, we see a part of that document showing us the properties of scalene and obtuse triangles. What properties do you see here that are relevant to the current problem? Putting all this together, we see we have enough information to solve the problem. We can now say definitively that this triangle is scalene and obtuse. How do we know this? We know this because all the slopes are not negative reciprocals. So it isn't a right triangle. We also see that the lengths of each side are different. So it must be scalene. And we know also that 
in a right triangle, the square of the longest side is always equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. But in this case, the square of the longest side is greater than that sum. In effect, it's too large, meaning the opposite angle must be greater than 90 degrees. Therefore, this triangle is scalene and obtuse. Now, let's consider a quadrilateral defined by points A, B, C, and D. What type of quadrilateral could it be? There are many types of quadrilaterals, from parallelograms to kites. Pause here and review the resource describing different types of quadrilaterals. And then, just like you did before, write what information you would need to be, to be able to identify this shape. Your first inclination might be to make a graph, and we can plot these points and look at them on a graph. In doing so, we can make a pretty good guess as to what kind of quadrilateral this is. But let's use our knowledge of coordinate geometry and let's find the slopes and the lengths of each side. Applying the slope formula, we see that some slopes have the same answer. Applying the Pythagorean theorem or distance formula, we also see some common answers. Was your earlier guess correct? Do you now know what this shape is? Let's look at a few passages from the resource document, Properties of Quadrilaterals. Pause the video and read through these properties. Which ones apply to this problem? What additional information do we need? Now we can put all this together and see that, based on these measurements, quadrilateral ABCD is a rhombus. How do we know this? We know this because opposite segments have the same slope, which means they are parallel. Opposite segments are also, by the way, of the same length. Either of these are sufficient to prove that this shape must be a parallelogram. But the slopes are not negative reciprocals, and therefore not perpendicular. So this isn't a rectangle. However, all segments are congruent to each other, which means it must be a rhombus. Therefore, quadrilateral a, B, C, D is a rhombus. Notice that we can also determine this quadrilateral just by looking at the diagonals. How can diagonals inform us about what types of quadrilaterals we have? Pause the video and review the resource again, this time noticing the facts about diagonals. When we apply our knowledge of coordinate geometry, we can find the slopes, the lengths, and the midpoints of each diagonal. What do you notice about the slopes, lengths, and midpoints? How does this show us that the shape is a rhombus? This gives us another strategy to identify the shape. We know quadrilateral ABCD is a rhombus. And how do we know this? We know this because since the diagonals share a midpoint, that means that each diagonal bisects one another. Therefore, it must be a parallelogram.
Since the diagonals are not of congruent length, it can't be a rectangle or a square. However, the diagonals are perpendicular to one another, as we see from the negative reciprocals on the slopes. Therefore, we know it must be a rhombus. And that is how you use coordinate geometry to classify triangles and rectangles.